Hello YouTube, this is Phantom Roy, and welcome to round three of Mad Madness. In this tournament, it's win or go home and anything can happen. It's an NFC matchup today in Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, home of the Patriots. So who you got in this one? Let us know in the comments below before the game and subscribe to follow the action as it happens. So without further ado, it's the Vikings, it's the Bucks, it's Mad Madness, and it's time to get going. So here we are in round three. Things are starting to pick up in intensity for those that are still left. It's the Vikings and the Bucks today. Tampa Bay will be the first one to kick it off, which means they'll get ball first at the start of the second half. And the kick is away, and so is this game. McKinnon brings it out, and he's dropped at the 22. So, bad decision to come out of the end zone to start off the game. And here comes Case Keenum. He's going to be a Bronco now, but coming off a really good year. And it hasn't really shown in Madden Madness, though. He's thrown one touchdown, but thrown an interception as well. And the Vikings will break huddle now. Three wide to start off the game. Keenum to Murray, and Murray's blowing up in the backfield. It's a loss of two, and that could be a tone setter for this one. The Bucks' defense has really stepped up so far in Madden Madness. So second and 12 now for the Vikings. Running formation for the offense. Keenum under center. Keenum will throw. And he's got Thielen. He's got a gain of four. And that's going to set up third down. So the Vikings smack the Lions and the Bears to get here, winning 21-3 and 20-0 in each game. The team has been sensational, and they need to keep it going to beat the Bucks, who have... A shot out as well. There, theirs was against the Panthers. Third and seven now for the Vikings. Their first third down of the game. And it's Keenum. He throws it incomplete. And so the Vikings will punt. So Tampa Bay will receive here. Quigley kicks it away. And it's caught at the 19 by Martino, who's knocked down pretty quickly after a gain of five out at the 24. And that's where Tampa Bay will come out. Jameis Winston. He's, throw, he's gotten three touchdowns and no picks so far in Madden Madness. He's been on fire. To beat the Vikings, he's going to have to keep the ball rolling, though. And he and the Bucks have been a huge surprise so far in Madden Madness. It's been crazy. We'll see if it was a fluke or if they're for real. This is their toughest comp competition yet. Winston to Barber, and Barber gets positive yards, a gain of five on the play, they'll call it. So second and five upcoming. And the Bucks survived the Falcons, winning 18 to 15 in overtime, and then put on the biggest shutout in the history of Madden Madness against the Panthers, winning 24 to zero. 
The Bucks have been one of the biggest surprises of the league this year. The Bucks have to put on a performance tonight to have a chance of, against the Vikings, who are one of the favorites to win it all. Barber again up the gut, and they inch a bit closer, gain of three. And here's the Vikings defense. Griffin. Gideon, who has a pick six under his belt. And Sandejo, who has a pick six under his belt. So third and three now, Vikings showing blitz. And it's Barber and it's a first. So the Bucks convert where the Vikings could not. They moved the chains. And that's the first big challenge in any football game is get the first first down. Because if it takes a while for you to get that first down, you start to get timid and it, it's kind of a downward spiral. Good for Tampa Bay to get that out of the way now. And they should be just playing now. Winston to Barber again. Winston under center. Hands it to Martin. And Martin gets up close near the first down. Gain of eight on his first carry of the game. Third and one. And Martin has two touchdowns so far in Mad Madness. Winston now setting up a third and one. They converted their last attempt. This one's even easier. We'll see if the Vikings can get a stop here as the Bucks approach midfield. Winston to Martin, and Martin's got space. Doug Martin out to the 42. So he gets a first and a heck of a lot more. So just like that, the Bucks are well within field goal range. Well, edge of field goal range. And they'll break huddle. Three wide, showing run. Winston. Picked off by Kendricks. Kendricks, that's going to get the Vikings out to the 20. And that's Kendricks' first interception of Madden Madness. And also, it's Jameis Winston's first interception as well. So on the near pick six, we'll see what um, the Vikings can do on offense up they, after they were unable to get some yardage. We'll see if they can ride this momentum now.
Hits Keenum. And Bucks step up big as he's taking down for a sack. Robert Ayers. Second and 18 coming up. And that's a pretty big sack by the defense after that interception that almost turned into a pick six. Keenum under center. Fakes the handoff. And he's got some time. Keenum steps to his right, steps further to his right, and he doesn't get away. He's taken down for another sack. It's Golston. And that'll take us to the end of the first, third and 18. So 0-0, zero, zero. defenses have won out so far. But Vikings will have a chance to get on the board here first on the other side. All right, we're back. The Vikings are tied with Tampa Bay at zero. But third and 18, we'll see if they can convert and give themselves a chance at seven. Otherwise, they'll have to settle for the three. They have not converted yet on third down. 0 for 1 so far. Back down, I think. Keenum got him. And he did. He got Chris Baker to come off sides, and so that'll make a little bit more manageable third down. Third and 13. And Coder knows that that five yards might mean a big difference here on this play. The first one of the second quarter. Under center, Keenum fakes the handoff. He's going to throw, and he throws with... And hits Thielen. Hits him with some fire. And that'll make it first and goal from the three. So Minnesota converts that third and 13. And the Vikings, they're just... They've, going into next year, they're going to be one of the most well-rounded teams to play this game in a long time. Number one defense, number ten offense, that could only go up with Kirk Cousins. Keenum to Murray, and Murray gets knocked at the six. He's, lo he's only lost yards on his two carries. Four wide, Keenum in the shotgun. Draw play to Murray, and Murray isn't going to get there. His best run of the day so far. Gain of only four, maybe three, and that'll set up third and goal. And that's really been Minnesota's strength here in the red zone. Murray has a touchdown, McKinnon has two. And it looks like they will continue on the ground. It's Murray, and he doesn't get there. Loses a yard. So after four rushes, Murray still had negative yardage, and that sets up fourth and goal. Decision time for the Vikings. They should go for three here. It's frustrating, but... He 
You gotta take whatever points you can get. You can't leave points on the table in this league. And Kai Forbath. Locked and loaded. Bridgewater holds, and the kick is good. So Minnesota goes up three points. They cash in off the interception. And if you're Tampa Bay, you've got to be disappointed in that interception that turned into points, but he didn't give up the touchdown. So Tampa Bay, after throwing the pick, still has a chance to retake the lead on this next drive. And Forbath gets ready to kick it away. Ball's in the air. And it's caught near the goal line by Smith, who's going to run it out past the 20, past the 25, and he'll be taken down right at the 25, actually. So same as taking a knee. They'll call it 26 yards on the return. And here comes Winston, who threw a pick on his first pass attempt. And we'll see if the bubble kind of bursts, as he hasn't thrown a pick yet in Madden Madness. He scored three touchdowns, though. So, number three with three touchdowns, trying to make it four, trying to overcome this 3-0 lead. Three zero deficit, I should say. Running formation for the offense, cross in motion. Hands to Barb, and Barber is gonna lose yardage, he's gonna lose three. They'll call it a loss of two officially. And that'll set up second and 12. So Minnesota's defense is coming out to play. So three and a half minutes left in the second. Three wide for Winston. Four wide. Winston will throw. And he's taken down immediately for a sack. It's Joseph. Third and 19 now. Loss of six. So now third and 19, Winston down three points. We'll see what he can do here. They'll draw with Sims, and Sims will get some yardage, six. They'll call it, but it's not enough for the first, not even close. And so Minnesota is going to get the ball back with two and a half minutes left in the first half. Anger takes it pretty deep down to the 19 where it's caught by Sharice. He's going to run it up for maybe five yards, and that'll bring us to the two-minute warning. So Minnesota already up three, trying to make it up ten. All right, we're back. Vikings and Bucks. Both teams coming off a shutout victory. We'll see if Minnesota can deliver another shutout or if Tampa Bay can pick themselves up, dust themselves off, and get themselves back in this game. Well, they're still in this game, but I'm talking about getting a lead here or tying it. Keenum. 
Throws from the pocket. And he gets maybe one yard on the on the completion. So second and nine, he hit Murray. And that'll stop the clock at 1 minute 56 seconds. So Tampa Bay's defense has been really playing well so far over the past couple of games. They definitely want to stop here. Keenum. It's Thielen. And Thielen's got a first down. His third reception of the game already. He's already got 42. So the Vikings, with time marching on, are getting kind of close to midfield. They break huddle. Four wide. Keenum, it's a screen. Throws as he's hit, and he hits Murray, who's able to fall forward for a first and a couple more yards. Clock running. That one's good for about 13, 12 or 13. Good job by Keenum staying in there and taking that hit. So Minnesota will take a timeout with 61 seconds left. As they think over this Next play. Vikings rush to the line. Keenum throws immediately, hits Kyle Rudolph, who has his first completion of the game. And that's going to get him close to the first down, where Minnesota's going to take another timeout. They'll call it second and inches. So, three zip, Vikings driving. Right, second and inches. Minnesota can do whatever they want here. They can throw, they can uh, run, maybe do a screen. We'll see what Tampa Bay calls on the other side of the ball. Tampa Bay gets the ball to start the second half as well, so if they can get a stop here, they can still get the lead on the other side. Keenum hits Murray for a first, and it's a gain of six. His third reception of the game as well. And the clock continues to run. Vikings in no hurry, it appears, with only 30 seconds left. Four wide for Keenum, who's in the shotgun. Keenum throws, and he hits Kyle Rudolph again. And Rudolph has a first down, so with 20 seconds left, they should hurry back to the line. Instead, they decide to take the timeout with 16 seconds left. So maybe they'll just settle for the field goal. Right, 16 seconds left. Minnesota can get a playoff. Oh 
they have plenty of time here they can use the entire field and maybe take a shot or two into the end zone if they get close to the goal line they can still run up and spike it and then decide but instead of running the play they'll settle for the three to go up six kicks away and it's good Minnesota takes a six point lead and you can't help but wonder if they took their timeouts too early they took two in a row near midfield and that kind of dug them a hole that they couldn't really get out of didn't really give them too, many, too much flexibility so that could have cost them more points we'll see if that matters as the game goes on so 13 seconds left Tampa Bay with three timeouts we'll see if they try something highly unlikely though definitely expect a run or a kneel depending on how this kickoff goes Horbath kicks it away caught at the two by Smith who's gonna run it up past the 20 where he's brought down at the 26 nine seconds left on the clock and maybe you call a screen I can't think of anything more that risky that I'd want to do besides maybe run up the gut nine seconds left you definitely don't want to force anything Winston's already thrown an interception in this one they'll break huddle and they'll come out in the eye so likely running situation see if they can just break something crazy Winston to Barber who's met at the line of scrimmage and brought down so that's going to bring us to the end of the first half. Minnesota leads, 6-zip. And there's no halftime in Madden Madness. We're going straight to the action on the other side. So Minnesota will kick it away to start the third quarter. Tampa Bay will receive. And depending on how this position, possession goes, Minnesota could find themselves down 6-7. Kicks away and caught on the S yes by Martino is going to run it up past the 20. And he brought down right at the 25, so same as the touchback. And here comes Tampa Bay. They finished the first half on offense, two for three on third down. And they're six for 16 overall before this game. Shut out the first half. We'll see if they can figure something out here to start the second half. Winston. It's Claire who's got a first down. And maybe Winston did figure something out. That first reception's good for a first down and maybe a gain of three extra yards or so. And Alclair was wide open. That was only Winston's second pass of the game, though. We'll see if they open up the air attack a little bit more. Vikings showing blitz. Auclair in motion. Winston to Barber. And Barber goes nowhere. Stopped right at the line. Maybe they'll call it a loss of one. Second and 11 coming up. It's Kendricks who had the pick earlier in the game. Gets credit for that stop. And the running game just isn't taking off. 
We'll see if the Bucks try and move away from that as the game progresses. Running formation for the offense. Winston under center. Winston to Barber. And Barber fights forward, and he's lucky to get positive yardage. As he's hit right at the line and drives forward, it's a gain of maybe three. Third and eight coming up for the Bucks, who have been doing pretty good so far. Two for three, trying to make it three for four. Just under five to play in the third quarter. Winston under center. Winston will throw here. And it's incomplete over the middle. So that brings up fourth down and Tampa Bay loses their opportunity to take the lead. Now it'll fall back on the shoulders of the Tampa Bay's defense. Finger to punt. Kicks away. And it lands just inside the end zone for a touchback. So out comes Minnesota, Keenum and company. And even if they have to settle for a field goal, they'll still have a two possession lead, but they don't want a field goal. They want to make this 13 to zero. Tampa Bay obviously doesn't want that to happen. We'll see who gets their wish. So for the first play of the second half for the Vikings on offense, Kim will be under center, and he'll hand it to Murray, and Murray's got space, can't make the extra man miss, and he's got his first positive, well, his first five-yard carry of the game. Second and five coming up. Three wide. It's Keenum. It's Murray with the diving catch, and ox excellent job by Murray bringing that home. And he's got more receiving yards than running yards so far in this one. Moves the chains and sets up first and ten. And Keenum's nine for ten so far in this game. Really excellent production by Keenum so far. He'll throw again. Keenum dumps it to Morgan immediately. He gains maybe two yards. And it's pretty neck and neck in terms of time of possession. Vikings obviously have the edge in yards, but... It's pretty even so far in terms of offensive production. Just that pick is really the biggest difference in this game. Second and eight now. Tampa Bay trying to force him into a third and long. Vikings in the running formation. Keenum to Murray. And Murray gets stopped right at the line. So it will be a third and long. And the Vikings will try it on third down for the third time in this game. They're one for two so far. So flip a coin for this one. Four wide likely to throw are the Vikings. He will. With Keenum. He's got time in the pocket. He throws. Incomplete. Could have been an interception, but instead it falls harmlessly to the turf, and Tampa Bay will have yet another shot to try and take the lead. And you know what Winston hasn't done so far in this one? It's scramble. Most of his big plays have come from scrambling, and he has not scrambled once in this game so far. So we'll see if maybe they'll try and work that in.
And Quigley will punt. Kicks away. It's a high kick. Pretty far, too. Lands at the 5. Bounces at the 1 and just barely falls into the end zone, forcing the touchback. So close. And Winston's got to breathe, breathe a sigh of relief as he walks onto the field now, trying to overcome that interception. And more importantly, trying to overcome that six-point deficit. Campbell Bay comes out in the eye. Winston to Barber, and Barber gets about two yards on the carry. Second and eight coming up, and the Vikings just aren't really giving up much on the ground. They're trying to force it, to Winston to throw it. Tampa Bay, second and eight. Four wide. Tampa Bay is likely to throw here. And he will. It's a screen. Panics on the screen, and he's taken down for a sack. Loss of 10 on the play. It's Anthony Barr. And that sets up third and 18. So two for four so far on third down. They're going to try and convert this third and 18 to make it three for five. Winston takes the handoff. He's going to throw here deep over the head of the receiver. And I think there might be a pass interference call. He was trying to hit Mike Evans. Wow. That is a huge call. It's Trey Waynes. Wow. So now Tampa Bay is near midfield. And that reminds me of the pass interference call that Tampa Bay endured. They were on the other side of that call against the Falcons, which ultimately set up a game-tying touchdown. Let's see if the Bucks can capitalize in a similar fashion here. Winston. Barber and Barber once again gets two. Minnesota's just not giving up on this run defense and it's working out for him. So end of third end of the third. Vikings with a six point lead. Alright, fourth quarter. Let's make it a break at time. Vikings are up six to zero. Tampa Bay near midfield after a huge pass interference call on a third and 18. Second and eight now, and we'll see if they try and throw again. Bunch set of receivers to Winston's right. Or Winston's left, I should say. Winston. Bounces around in the pocket, and he had the man open, but he just missed him. It's incomplete. Sets up third and eight. And you're not going to get a PI call twice in a row on third down against the Minnesota Vikings. You got to find your man open. And you got to be accurate and deliver a strike. Four wide for Winston, likely to throw here. And he will. Winston toward the sideline, it's complete. That's his first catch of the game, and that moves the chains. Critical time for that. And he did get the feet down, it appears. So, Tampa Bay now, three for six on third down. Down six, with six minutes and 30 seconds left in the fourth. 
And now Tampa Bay's marching. Winston. Throws incomplete. He's had guys open, but just can't hit the receivers. Clock stops with 6 minutes and 25 seconds left. Second and 10 now. Tampa Bay's got to get better about avoiding those third and longs. See if they can do just that here on second and 10. It's Winston. Rolls to his left. He throws across his body. He's got Jackson for a first down and a lot more. And just when Tampa Bay needed to get the ball moving, that's what they're doing. So from the 16, this is the first time Tampa Bay has been in the red zone. Bounce formation for the offense. Winston to Barber, who has his biggest run of the game, and that's a gain of six. Second and three coming up. And Tampa Bay is moving ever closer to the promised land. And Minnesota, only up six, can find themselves down here in the fourth quarter. Five minutes left in the game. Winston under center in the eye. Winston to Barber. And he gets about nowhere. Maybe one yard. They'll call it a gain of one. Third and two coming up. So the Bucks now are going to try and convert this thing. Three for six so far. Flip a coin. It's a lot harder in the red zone now as Winston in. Might have gotten him off sides. And that should give him a first down. Oh, it's a false start. So third and short becomes third and seven. Not the easiest thing to convert here. Four wide. Winston likely to throw here. Seven yards back. Winston throws and he's got Sims and Sims gets it right on the goal line that's his first catch of the game first and goal from the one and the Vikings are just lucky that wasn't a touchdown now they gotta figure something out now this next play could decide the lead Winston in the eye. Winston to Barber. And Barber gets taken down. I'm sure I'm surprised there wasn't a horse collar tackle on that. Horse collar tackle for sure by the Vikings. It's a gain of maybe an inch. Maybe a loss of an inch. It's hard to tell, but three minutes left in the game. Tampa Bay is trying to run the clock down as much as possible before they can punch it in here. And I think that's a f another false start. Oh, it's a defensive penalty. A lot of defensive penalties so far. Minnesota's defense is not... They need to finish this game. They have a really good chance of doing it here if they can just get a stop. Three wide, and another pre-snap flag. 
Who's this against? Wow. That's going to move him back to the five. And they're right back where they started. How can you let the, the linemen... I don't understand. I If I was Winston, I would be furious. Encroachment, you're on the one-inch line, and now you're on the five. Doesn't get any easier the farther back you go. I mean, Winston to Martin, and Martin's taken down, and there's another flag. Flag down on the tackle. Donovan Smith and that's going to make it second and goal from the 14 so really sloppy pit play by both teams here towards the end of this game second and goal now Winston under center Another flag. What is going on right now? At this point, I'm like, guys, come on. Let's just get this play off. Let's just get through this third down or the second down, please. <laughs> this is insane. What is it like? Three or four penalties? I think four penalties on this, at least over the course of these two plays. On this drive, maybe five, five or six penalties total. It's been a mess. Winston, it's another flag. I can't believe this is happening right now. So, Tampa Bay moves back to the 14 once again. It's insanity. I don't understand. Four wide for the Bucks if they are able to get this playoff. They do. Winston sprints up, takes it himself, and they're right back to the nine. It's third and goal. Two minutes and 20 seconds left in this one. They might be in four down territory here. We'll see. Winston will throw. And he hits his tight end, Cameron Brait. And that's going to take us to the two minute warning. Fourth and goal on the other side. Game possibly in the balance. Minnesota with the six point lead and the longest goal line stand in Madden Madness history, if not NFL. Two minute warning. All right, we're back. And we're finally going to get through this down and distance, it seems. Fourth and goal, Tampa Bay. Trying to pull ahead. We'll see if they settle for the field goal or not. They're going to go for this thing. Down six. They're going for the lead. Winston in the eye. Or running formation. Winston. Throws. It's complete. It's Mike Evans. Flag down on the play. We'll see what this is about. Wow. It's Joe Hawley. And they're back to the 14. You can't write this stuff, man. So now from fourth and goal from the 14, they're going to, we'll see what they can do. See if they can do it twice in a row. Three wide. And we're going to have another flag. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> 
I can't believe this is happening right now. Back to the 19 now. There's been like 10 flags. I can't believe what's going on right now. Minute 57 from the 19. If I'm Tampa Bay, I'm just going to kick the field goal. Instead, they'll go for it from the 19. I don't know. For the game, possibly. Four wide. It's Winston. And it falls incomplete. And will the play stand? It, it seems that it will. So turnover on downs. Minnesota gets the ball up six. They're in the driver's seat. They control their des destiny. Winston just tried to get it high up, but Terrence Newman was in the area and perfectly positioned himself. So here comes Minnesota. Down six. They can go Tampa Bay into using a timeout on this play. And then they can get a first down. They should pretty much have this one wrapped up. T.J. Ward gets set on the defensive side of the ball as Keenum gets under center, running formation for the offense. Keenum to Murray. And Murray had a hole, but took his time getting out of it. They're going to say he lost a yard. No, they'll say he, he got a yard. Second and nine now. Tampa Bay is going to take a timeout. All right, we're back. Second and nine. Minnesota has the ball, trying to run this one out. But Tampa Bay, if they can stop them here, they'll get the ball back. Down six. It's anyone's game. Three wide. Keenum to Murray. And Murray's going to run it out and get the first. And Tampa Bay's going to be forced to take a timeout. So Minnesota might actually be able to run the clock out from here. What a bizarre game this has been. No touchdowns. Minnesota only getting... Two field goals, one off an interception that brought them this deep, deep into the into uh, Tampa Bay territory, and then that series at the goal line. Like, what is going on? It could only happen deep in playoff football, <laughs> classic football, right? And so Minnesota now will come out in the eye. Keenum to Murray. And Murray's going to be brought down. Tampa Bay is going to take a timeout. Second and 11 now. Minnesota should be able to run the clock almost all the way down regardless of what happens. Unless something crazy happens. Unless there's a fumble or a turnover. See what happens here. Keenum in the shotgun. Choice of backs to his left and behind and he'll run it to Murray and Murray will get knocked down and the clock will run it's got about 40 seconds to run off here and that'll bring it down to 55 so Tampa Bay will have the opportunity for maybe one or two Hail Marys if they can get the stop of course barring an interception or a fumble recovery 
So Minnesota, one for three, is going to come out and try and ice this thing. Keenum to McKinnon. And McKinnon will be brought down at 37. His first rush of the game is good for only six. It makes it fourth and seven. And Minnesota will have to punt the ball. Good, good job by Minnesota not forcing anything there. So here comes the punt now. Tampa Bay trying to get something crazy here. Maybe a crazy kick return for a touchdown. And it'll sail into the end zone with nine seconds left on the clock. So Tampa Bay from their own 20 is going to have to... I don't know. This is the part of the game where <laughs> anything goes. I would expect them to just throw some Hail Marys. They can't get, if they get a completion, they need a Minnesota Miracle. That's what they need. It's Winston. Throws for it. And the ball falls down. Stops the clock with five seconds left. So Minnesota's defense has been excellent, excellent. We played today. And that's the reason they won. Not many football games you can win scoring only six points. Here comes another Hail Mary from Winston. Throws immediately. Clock hits zeros. And the ball falls down incomplete. So Tampa Bay will go home. Minnesota will move on. They win this thing 6-0. to zero. Let's take a look at the brackets. So Minnesota will face the victor of the Cowboys and the Seahawks. So was your prediction right? Let us know in the comments. If you want to see the Vikings in their next game, be sure to subscribe. And be sure to check the link in the description to see when the next game is like the video if you enjoyed it and until next time this is phantom roy saying have a good one